Shalom, shalom. You're listening to Live Internet Studies. This is episode number 194. My name is Ariel ben Lyman Hanavi. Let's open with a word of prayer. Avinu Makino, our Father, our King, we find ourselves at the time of this recording right in the middle of your fall festivals, your special times that you have set apart on your calendar for us to meet you. It's so important, Lord, that we as your followers, both Jew and Gentiles and Messiah, it's so important that we actualize the truth that these are your times of refreshing. They are, ti- they are your holy times. They are, they are your holy days. They're not uh, invented by the rabbis. They're not invented by the church fathers. They're not created by humans. Um, you designated these times. You gave them to Israel to steward them, to mark them out on our own calendars. In other words, we have to line our calendar up with your heavenly calendar. And in so doing, we believe that we are in a position where we can receive whatever you want to um, give to us. So, Lord, we're in a position where we're saying, open our hearts, open our minds, uh, open our ears to hear what the Spirit is saying. Um, the themes surrounding these uh, festivals, as has been properly taught by many, many um, Bible teachers, uh, myself included, is that these are dress rehearsals of messianic redemption. These festivals uh, highlight and earmark the um, uh, uh, the 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 uh, fullness of what Yeshua has done for us uh, as certain um, highlights in his life. You know, he filled it. He fulfilled the Passover lamb expectation. The the um, the unleavened bread. He has that true bread that came down from heaven. Um, he is the first fruits risen from the dead. Right. Uh, he poured out his spirit at at uh, Shavuot at Pentecost. And now as we enter into these fall feasts, what I just described a moment ago was the spring feast. And now as we enter these fall feasts, we see again the opportunity to understand the workings of our Messiah Yeshua as he is the one who's calling us. He is the voice of the trumpet calling us to awaken, to to awaken from our spiritual slumber, to to wake up and be uh, get prepared because the king is coming. He himself is that king. And yet um, his voice is that trumpet as well. Um, the, the spiritual themes, and now we're turning to Yom Kippur uh, this week, or by the time this recording goes out, it'll already be passed. Um, he is that Yom Kippur sacrifice, uh, just like he uh, f- uh, is the perfect uh, Passover sacrifice. He's the perfect Yom Kippur goat as well. All of the sins of the world were laid on him. And then um, he's our atonement, our final atonement as our high priest, right? We read the entire book of Hebrews. And now uh, that final feast of um, of tabernacles, he is that one that tabernacled with us. He is God with us, God among us. He he pitched his tent with us. John um, 1.14 uh, tells us um, he dwelt among us in this tent, this human tent, the word made flesh, um, God with us, Emmanuel, and... Um, uh, and now this this new birth takes place this 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 eighth day, Lord. It's so important that we um, take time to uh, uh, recognize these festivals and to celebrate them if at all possible. So thank you for this time. Um, thank you for uh, opening our eyes and giving us um, uh, the um, um, just the desire to want to walk in your ways and uh, be pleasing to you. Because we know that if we do it your way, then um, we have your blessing on it. So uh, continue to protect us and raise us up and strengthen us. And we'll be careful to give you the praise and the glory. Meshim Yeshua, Amen. All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining me week after week during these live studies. Um, thank you for allowing me to, to go really, really long in my prayer there. Uh, those of you who are watching this segment one of these videos, um, five parts to this uh, first 30-minute segment, you didn't catch the prayer. You have to wait for the longer, uh, full hour-long video at the end of the week to catch that. But we're in our Matthew 9 uh, study once again. This is a study on, it's entitled Judaism. Uh, are Judaism and Christianity incompatible with one another? Or the short working title is Judaism v. Christianity, or as I kind of jokingly said two weeks ago, uh, JVC. And so we're talking about this passage that we find in the book of Matthew and in Mark and in Luke about Jesus being questioned about why he and his disciples are fasting. And then he, he answers the question as to why he's not, why he's fat, why he's not fasting. I'm sorry. Why his disciples aren't fasting, why they're not. And then he goes on to supply these parables uh, about a uh, patching a cloth and um, pouring new wine into old wineskins. And he uses that opportunity to obviously teach an important lesson to everyone who was listening 
But what we've learned is that there is no explanation in either one of the uh, records that is left for us. So what Christianity has done from time all the way back, so from from when since Christianity has been a people group, right, historical Gentilist version of Christianity, is that we've supplied our own allegorical meanings behind the passages. So um, I'm not going to read the passage this time. I've got it sitting on your screen, but for time's sake let's just jump right into my own commentary but we're working from matthew 9 14 through 17 or uh shows up in mark uh 2 18 through 22 and then it also shows up in luke 5 33 through the end of the chapter which is 39 all right 